This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. SliceOnBroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Hey guys, it's Wrestling Mayhem Show. I know I'm not going in here with the usual energy that we do because, of course, things are a little uh, different this week. Uh, obviously, we're coming to you recording on Wednesday night. Sorry, apparently there's other wrestling going on tonight. Uh, but uh, we, we we decided to push things back a day uh, in observance of the uh, Blackout Tuesday movement. Um, of course, I don't have to say a lot of things happening in the world right now. Um, we have been, uh, you know, talking in on the back channels with Wrestling Mayhem Show, and obviously stuff has been happening in the Facebook group in response uh, to in response to the response from the wrestling world, and of course our own feelings and thoughts and and uh, uh, coming grips with um, the situation concerning uh, the murder of George Floyd, as well as uh, uh, you know all the protests happening, uh, the Black Lives Matter, um, which Black Lives Black Lives, I want to say this very explicitly on behalf of the Wrestling Mayhem Show, Black Lives do matter. And we didn't feel right talking about wrestling and feeling goofy on on Monday night and, and don't know how to feel comfortably doing that to a certain point. With the Wrestling Mayhem Show, I just want to say, to me, this has always been um, meant to be a safe place for everybody to forget about things. Sometimes we bleed into it because of one thing or another, usually something WWE has done, but uh, we can't really do that anymore with the gravity of how things are unfolding right now. So uh, I, I will warn you, we, I mean, we're going to have some fun. We're going to do our homework assignment. We're going to do a big question, but a lot of what we're going to talk about today is still going to be in the vein of what happens with wrestling, but it is going to be a lot of response and a lot of our feelings are going to come out with that. Uh, so I don't apologize for that because I think that that needs to happen. I think, um, separating ourselves from conversations like this, even on this kind of platform, uh, is exactly how we get to this point. Um, and I'm hoping that, uh, we can have some good conversations with it. Um, elevate some voices as much as we can. We're talking with some people um, about doing that in the next several weeks, hopefully, and, uh, and, and hopefully help you guys uh, along the way, too. Uh, however, this may help as well. So I do have a crew with me. It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show, and that means one of the guys that's going to be joining me from Beacon, New York, in his secret bunker away from everything is Mad Mike. I want to point out, I am not hiding in a bunker. This just happens to be where I have the best Wi-Fi signal. You're doing better than Matt was on the last show. <laughs> His bunker does not have good Wi-Fi as he was dropping on the awesome cast as well. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I, Sorg, I want to echo your statements. Um, Black Lives Matter. Absolutely. A uh, thousand percent. If, you, if you're friends with me on Facebook... You've seen what I post. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, uh, we, I, the, the, my, I have I have dropped the political barrier myself as well. Yeah, you know? uh, same thing on Twitter. Like it's it, it's a crazy time out there. Um, it's a sad time out there. We're gonna talk about. It. We're gonna get into it a little bit. And rest assured, I will make dick jokes. So, because Lord knows, I've always believed laughter is the best medicine. Uh, I've always believed coming on this podcast is the best medicine and Dick, because and Dick, I've gone through I've gone through some shit in my life and coming to this podcast is home. Absolutely. It makes you feel good. It it's cathartic. You can get out shit you need to get out, and you can have a good time with your friends while doing it. You have no you have no idea how many times yelling at Mike has helped me through my week. <laughs> <laughs> For instance, yeah. Uh, oh, if we record the post-Raw wrap-up oh. show, oh boy, we'd be thrown off the internet. 
Also with us from Seattle. Why did I almost say Seattle, New York? That's not right at all. That's that's not even Seattle, New York. The, I'm just creating places. The Windy Apple. The Windy Apple. The Windy Apple. It's the Emerald Apple. The emerald or- Apple. It's it is the green apple. The green why apple. We, why are we calling it that? The evergreen apple. There we go. Tina Keys is joining us. How are you doing, Tina? Hello, hello. <laughs> oh, great. Also with us, uh, I warned him we were going to talk about some stuff when I gave him the last minute invite, but Dave Potter <laughs> is joining us. <laughs> I think my, my, uh, my message was, hey, can you come on the show? We got a slot. Also, we're going to be talking about some things. <laughs> it's like, sure, you know, preparation. Who needs preparation? Oh, we don't. It's Wednesday. I don't know what's going on. Half the people I invited are working in wrestling shows because apparently that happens in some <laughs> states, but not ours. But uh, <laughs> or, on a Wednesday or night. One thing. Hmm. But before I move to the pe- to the hills of Penn, mm-hmm. um, I lived I for six and a half years in West stuff, Virginia. Oh, oh, we got some color feedback. <laughs> go ahead. We go ahead, Potter. Okay, no. <laughs> I say I lived for two, six and a half years in West Virginia going to school down there. So. Oh. I know how things run in West Virginia or don't run in West Virginia. So, yeah. Outlaw state. It's an outlaw <laughs> state. Jeez. Um, anyways, well, there's a whole so, other conversation. Also, before we get more serious, mm-hmm. one second. Oh, here he goes. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, he's, he's not on the frame. <laughs> here we go. And cats. Cat butt for Bradley. Yes. Yes. That's for Bradley. We know he's out there. We know he's out there. Thank you for that. (laughs) Thank you so much. Guys, it is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. A uh, real quick version of this, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Please subscribe to everything. Follow us on all the social media. And we are live basically everywhere at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Tuesday, typically, of course, making adjustments as things happen. Um, also, I do want to announce we are, speaking of Bradley, I see him out there. He had been on the Instagram. So he got a really good close-up as that because Instagram is cropping everything fantastically right now. Uh, we're trying some experiments out with that. So if you like the Instagram or need the notification we're on all those places thank you to our, our streaming partners or uh nope they're not our stream partner on this show but our <laughs> friends at the 405 media.com post although like, go follow post industrial i'll give them a shout out because they're doing really good coverage on everything from the beginning of the coronavirus to uh the protests over the past week as well that's not what this show well that part isn't what this show's about important journalism <laughs> it's not us uh also thank you to our patreon supporters at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show this i do have to get out here our friends that are supporting this show so we can keep going <laughs> Bo- Woo! Ed Burke, Bobby F, J Town, and Team Hammer Fist. Our friends at the Poppy Club, Bradley uh, Ruthers, uh, Cat Bus for Bradley, uh, Dave Podner, Daniel Towery, and Tina Keys. Hey, Tina. That's me. That's you. <laughs> at the Pizza Club level, Doc Remedy and Cal Turner. And at the manager level, OccupyProWrestling.com and Fonsworth Investments. And coming, and we'll talk about this in a second, and coming soon, we're going to figure out which level you too can ban people. Uh, <laughs> from the wrestling mayhem show uh because apparently that's a trend that started over the last couple of days uh thanks aew but anyways i I don't even know what to start with at this point um because the world is upside down and pro wrestling still is going on for some reason and uh and uh not doing a good job of it i I, mike hi you're my temp (laughs) mike i i I, you are my my barometer of what i should be mad at Mm -hmm. (laughs) mm-hmm I don't know. I'm going to let you. Uh, what What is your first grievance? This is like a uh, Festivus. This is like Wrestling oh. Mayhem Festivus right now. Boy. Basically, Where some people are not start? good at. We're going to have some positive stuff. We are going to get to some positive stuff that, Where that is happening. To start, but. Where to start? Um. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> Damn, you weren't prepared. No, I was, but God. I, like, I wish I had a wheel. Like, Wheel of unfortunate things this weekend and just have okay. it spin and land on, let's say, Jackson Wright. Oh, just, God, you're just going straight for it. You know, okay. because, I, because I have a feeling that's going to be the most heated thing. And then we can talk about Sonny and just laugh. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then I, we can go back to something awful. And then we can just 
make dick jokes and laugh. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I, I figure might as well start with the worst of the worst. Okay. Okay. Because because it does dovetail into what we were talking about last week. Because we were ta- I did mention the Forgotten Sons promos last week. Yes. And I, how I, I guess the, the first question is for because a lot of people that maybe aren't catching up with all the wrestling that is, is sadly still happening without uh fans. Who the hell is Jackson Riker? Oh, well Jackson Riker, um if if you may remember him from uh Hold on, hold on. Let me let me do my former color voice. You may remember him from being in TNA as Gunner, <laughs> the son of Gunner's dad. Huh? Uh, yes, I I put Gunner's dad first because Gunner's dad was a fun part of Impact because he was fucking weird. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, if you don't know who Gunner's dad is, don't bother looking at. It, oh, okay. But just know that it existed. Because I don't, I, I don't want to condone anyone to go watch old Impact. Mm. The world is having enough problems now. <laughs> I don't need to add that on. It's plate. not a coping mechanism. Don't, don't, no, don't. No, no we got to go back. We, we will have to go back to Impact shortly. So yes, I, we will. Yes, but, but yeah. see, we can do that for a fun thing because that may be fun. Yeah. Mm, okay. Mm. Well, <laughs> yeah, yes and no. Listen. <laughs> By the well, way, what I was thinking about, no, but okay. Okay, but speaking of impact, um, uh, Rockstar Spud just tweeted a picture an hour ago of his face photoshopped onto CM Punk's body, holding the cruiserweight title with EC3 kissing it goodbye. No, <laughs> he just he wow. posted that an hour ago, and I'm like, God, please make that happen. Mm-hmm. We- we have been hurting so much. I need this right mm-hmm, now. Mm-hmm. Because, because, all right, before we get, Rockstar Spud is a hell of a man. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're everywhere. You're everywhere right now. I, Sorg, we have to be everywhere. You know why? Because we can't go anywhere. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorg, I've been in this house a long time. I've gone to Target twice. <laughs> That's it. Since April. Oh, man. It's been oh, a man. rough. No, you gotta go to a park or something. Man. I have built a literal Hogwarts. Yeah, yeah, you did. You actually did. Not yeah. out of Lego, out of brick. Oh no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, Don't look in the so, backyard. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so the Forgotten Sons. Yes. Um, basically, if you haven't been watching SmackDown, and Lord, I can't blame you. Why you would? Mm-hmm. Um, they've been cutting promos the past couple months, basically uh, talking up their veteran status and how. They have not been received as heroes, mm-hmm. and they are, you know, preaching everything. Uh, very, very, very preachy stuff. And then saying that because they have not been received as heroes, uh, your blood is going to be on their hands. Which <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's in the promo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. That's in the context of a wrestling program. Fine. We've seen worse we've heard worse but it just it frames into context a little bit what's going on Mm -hmm. makes it very uncomfortable and you know all that aside okay you can still do it it's maybe not the best thing in the world especially if they get their asses kicked then it's fine but then over the weekend (laughs) Jackson Riker decided to act a fool. Oh, no, 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 no. This was during Raw. Oh, no. It was during Raw. Oh, yeah. That's, that's even worse. Yeah. Okay. yeah. This was amidst. Oh, to be fair, I don't know what time is anymore. So yeah, anything yeah. that's not this show is a weekend for me. <laughs> <laughs> this was uh, anyway. shortly after the press conference. So, yeah. Um, uh, oh, oh. oh that, that makes it much worse. Okay. But yeah, so, he decided to act a fool. In timely yeah. wimey context, this was after the this was the press conference that had led to a church visit that people are concerned with, uh, I believe, right? And all right, and yeah, let's stop world. calling it a church visit because when you visit somewhere, you go inside the place. Mm. I mean, it wasn't a visit; it was a photo op. Yeah, yeah, it was. Why did the chicken cross the road to do a photo op in front of a church? Yes. Anyway, um, so. Do we want to read the Riker tweet? I don't or, want to. I okay. Then let, I mean, then let's try. just I, that's, no. I, I, he hasn't deleted it. He hasn't deleted it, so yeah, it's, it's yeah. there. 
Yeah, it, it was a very um, there's a shock. Uh, well, it, it, is it available? Do you have it handy, Mike? Uh, I oh. can bring it. It's it, it's so, probably it's not going to be hard to find. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Riker tweet. Uh, let's see. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, it might have been deleted. Hold on, let me. But, let me uh, I, I, I have a couple screenshots here. Yeah, it uh, might, it might have actually been deleted because I don't see it. Okay, I have the screen. I, I have someone. Oh uh, no, I don't see it I don't for the tweet. Never mind. Yeah, someone, someone, and also all the responses from all the uh, from a whole bunch of other WWE wrestlers who are like. <clears throat> Get over yourself, Dick Watt. It says, uh, thank you for the POTUS we have. God bless America. Build a freedom. Forgotten no more. So oh, his his Twitter got shut down. Whoa. Oh. Whoa. I, <laughs> and that that was like 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 so we had that, and then we had the responses from Ali. We had uh uh Kevin's Kevin, Ke Owens. Kevin, Kevin Owens, Kevin go, Owens going at him and basically the rest of the wrestling world. Um, um, also, also important to note, his partner Steve Cutler also weighed in on it. Yeah, oh, no. his tag team partner in the Forgotten Son, Steve Cutler, also weighed in, not condoning his words and thought behind it at all. So it's good to know that you know one out of three ain't bad. Mm. Uh, <laughs> um, just a um, just a just a note. Like I, I did find Riker's uh, Twitter. It is still there. Mm -hmm. I, oh, and, it's still there. And his tweet he, is still he might, there. He might have blocked you, Tina. And he, oh, no. <laughs> did you say something, Tina? <laughs> yeah. um, I did. Okay. <laughs> there you hey, go. There you Tina, go. Tina, <laughs> Tina. Don't, Tina, yeah. There is oh, no, no shame no. in being Oh, I, yeah, I did. Okay. Um, there's oh, there's yeah. no shame. In no, there's no shame. Right there's right. no shame. Oh, hell no. no. No shame at all. I got. I just found out I got blocked by Scott Bale. I don't even know why. What? Yeah, well, he, that, he was I, saying some some stupid shit too. No, but I like. Did you? This is this is not recent. Oh. I think it has to do with me pestering him to give up the name Chachi so that Chachi could use. <laughs> oh, we were for a bit. Yeah, I yeah. think that's why I got blocked by Scott Bale. Yeah, and then he decided to act a fool too. I'm like, yeah, good riddance. <laughs> oh, okay. Actually, no, I did not get blocked by him. So. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, keep trying. Are you also confused <laughs> about how the fuck you 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 spell Jackson? Cause, yeah, that's probably what it was. Because it's oh yeah, not, because it's it's way unnecessary. No, it is. It's yeah. like he found Jackson Argos and decided to add some letters. <laughs> the hell? Yeah. What's what? Who gave you that name? I thought we were d uncomplicating people. Anyways. You're there. He's the Norse god, and he's the son of the Mortal Kombat character Jax. I, I there's that too. Um, I uh, my my favorite, and I didn't go deep into the responses because I just need to see quantity and not quality in this kind of situation. Um, mm -hmm. There's a wonderful uh, video of of I believe this is a Hangman Page telling somebody to politely go fuck themselves or shut yeah. the fuck up, and then he yeah, actually they, Jack, and Hangman actually does respond and says yes politely. Uh, politely. So yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. So so that was a big thing. And and my question is, what do you do in a company like that in HR when your entire company is publicly, <laughs> um, your, your entire roster is publicly berating each other on Twitter like that? Definitely well, had a story storyline. Well, I I think we should defer to Tina because Tina has um you know being. Uh, in the military. Tina, mm. I believe you probably have some views on this. Uh, as I said in my tweet to him, I'm disappointed in him. Uh, as a sister in arms, he's, he's straight, the person that he's praising straight up thinks that my life is not worth it or any others mm -hmm. um, as black lives are not worth it. Um, he said that multiple times. And I'm kind of disappointed as someone who has put on the uniform. Mm. Um, I mean, History, I don't want to go into a big, huge thing. Like, um, it was the same way with both of my grandfathers. My grandfathers were treated less, and they also served too. You know, I mean, it, it's, it, it hurts in a sense. Mm. Um, and that's pretty much about it. I, and that's all, I, that's all I'm going to say about it before I go off into a really huge tangent. <laughs> but, yeah. And it is what it is. Um, uh, there was a... And speaking of, and it, like I said, it, it's kind of disappointing not to go too off topic, 
I saw um, I saw a photo today um, of the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Hey, so yeah. you know what I said about that. So that yeah. is just like that's completely. We're, just... we're, yeah, we're talking the picture of the soldiers at the Lincoln Memorial on the steps. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. And it, and like I said, um, not to go on too of a tangent here. Those are the same steps that Dr. King did his I have a dream speech. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So to put that into context. So I'll, I'll stop with that. But yeah, it's it, it's disappointing. Mm-hmm. Um, he needs to. I understand your support of the president. You do what you do. I, we, we, I disagree with that. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm a bet. I'm supposed to support the president always. But we have different views. I respect the title. Um, just currently, I really, really disagree with the person who has that title Mm -hmm. um and yeah i yeah it it was just a hurtful statement from jackson and like i said you you went down the list of some of the people that ran him down for it so yeah yeah (laughs) when you have canadians coming at you (laughs) i think (laughs) I I think no. that sends a message. What makes it well, actually getting what makes it so interesting though is one of the v- most diplomatic responses was also coming from a former police officer. Really, mm-hmm. really, Ali. Well, Ali. Stop Ali. Yeah. He's a former Chicago police officer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who who's been on record saying the reason why he left was because of the old boy network where the way he was treated and the way he was trying to do things and it from now never being a police officer. I mm-hmm. can't say anything, but from reading his views, he was trying to do working with the community, trying to deescalate, try when he was dealing with people like, Oh no, you just go away and just bash him heads, head and heads in. And you know, that's how you really control the area. You know, mm-hmm. things that were like, didn't, we see, and I know fiction in real life, but there was an episode of Dragnet in the late '60s that talked about. Dragnet. Wait, oh my there God. was an Are episode to Dragnet. Yes, Sorry, that is no, late, late Dragnet '60s. Reference. Remember, late '60s. They were say they were set late '60s LA, mm-hmm. where they showed mm-hmm. an uh, an African American officer de-escalating, a, a, a you know a possible riot. Versus older white officers who just wanted to go in with tons of force, and this was this is something fifty years old mm-hmm. that they were talking about. And Dragnet was pro cop. This was not you mm-hmm. know some kind of weird liberal anti cop show. They worked with the police. This was as pro cop as you can get, and saying, "Hey, this is the new modern way to police, where you work with the community and you use de-escalations to prevent riots and not just go in there and, and bust heads in." I'm like, okay, that was 50 years ago, and apparently nothing's changed. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, yeah, yeah. And actually, Rob has a good point too. Um, yeah, because you um, people do it so often. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah, I, I can read that if you want, Tina. Um, yeah, he, he's Go saying ahead. he's a vet too, and as a vet, uh, he knows that it doesn't really make him more of an authority on anything, really. But people play that "I'm a vet" card, um, and it, that make it seem okay um, to do that and say questionable things. They can just kind of go fuck themselves. So that, that, that's yeah. pretty much the sentiment. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I yeah, know there's some strong words. I didn't want to make you make Sam. So, <laughs> and um, like, and again, I have a different perspective. My dad was in the service. Mine as well. Um, and I, like, my dad was the kind of guy who never played that card. Mm-hmm. Never, mm-hmm. never played it. Like, and he could have a lot of times. He never did. But it's just it, it not to denigrate every, anyone's service. It doesn't put you on a level above people mm-hmm. because and there, you can say that for any kind like you can say that for teachers mm-hmm. like hey we teach your kids like if you don't have teachers we don't have education or you can say that for nurses and doctors like there's any number of different professions that can say they have like a superiority over everyone else but it always seems like at least the worst 
instances you see are coming from military. And and actually, it's quite funny because um, Rob Rob and I do kind of sort of have the same sentiment. But um, you were mentioning with kind of a similar reason why Ali stopped being a cop. Um, I really don't put my status out there um, just because in the uh, you look at me and you wouldn't think it. And I think everyone has this kind of like. Um, they have a preconceived notion of. Yeah. And I, I think that's the one thing that they kind of like for just forget about like what the movement is in general, basically. Um, is that everyone comes from all different walks um, and all different professions and all different like mm -hmm. it, life experiences. But so uh, that wasn't the only thing. So before we move on, oh, absolutely. Um, no, no, the the putting military people on a pedestal mm -hmm. because I think I'm. I'm not, I'm not, I'm a hundred percent sure I'm the oldest one here was a, in, you know, being born in 72, mm -hmm. that was wow. a reaction from now, admittedly, by the time I start remembering stuff, we're talking early eighties and, but you know, I had my uncles who were in Vietnam. Yeah. Now no one treated them the way you see a lot of people coming back from what people told me, but they were not, oh, you came back from service. Oh, here's a, you know, you see, veteran parking space. That did not happen mm -hmm. in the 70s. Mm -hmm. And 80, for multiple reasons, there was a huge change to go from, yeah, we saw what happened on the nightly news overseas, what the military did, that civilians see and reacted to the, you know, how military was pushed in the 80s, especially when I hate to say it from 80 to 89. Uh, Grenada was the largest military thing that happened. Mm -hmm. And I remember graduating high school in 90 and it, anyone who sees me, who saw a senior picture of me would have laughed, but meeting with the Marine Corps um, recruiters <coughs> I was only around 50 pounds too heavy for to get actually in a service, but you know, just trying to listen to everyone and them basically saying to me, look, we all know the next war that's going to happen. Now remember this is late eighties. Mm -hmm. The next war it's going to happen. There's going to be missiles flying and there's not going to be anyone left afterwards because no one could get in their head. Well, think about it. We went at that point, 15 years without outside of Grenada and Panama. Mm -hmm major tens to hundreds of thousands of military personnel being stationed overseas. And the biggest threat everyone talked about was thermonuclear war. That's what was pounded into us in the eighties, you know, war games the day after doomsday clock, all that. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. All that was about, you know, Oh yeah. We're not going to have wars here. Or wars there. We're, we lose more people in training than we do in active, which was true in the eighties. We lost more people training at, you know, than we did in actual combat. So this is what a lot of people thought of. So, and then you had the pushing up of the military as, you know, Oh, you're, you were in the military. You're automatically a hero. And actually, no. um, yeah, Rob, Rob actually brought that point, but okay. Yeah. Break it back to that's why sorry, um, and I'm sorry, it, but I sorry sorry to break in like that, but <laughs> no 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 issue. Uh, but to bring it back, yeah, it was disappointing, mm -hmm. and I I just thought yeah. he 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 should have chose better. I, I understand he wanted to show his support. Um, and, I just, and he's, I just and he's, he's perfectly right to do that. Like that. That, that's, yeah. that's that's the brilliant thing about this country. But he's also got to accept the consequences that come with that. Absolutely. If, you're, if your coworkers tell you that you're a fuckwad for doing that, well, then you got to deal with it. Um, if, if, I, I think, if their team somehow their push goes away, and if we don't see any vignettes this weekend on this weekend SmackDown, 
that's going to happen. Yeah, well, that's my thing. I, isn't this SmackDown taped? Raw was taped, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so, so it's SmackDown yeah. possibly too. Yeah. So yeah. it'd be interesting to see if they had something planned for them and if there's any post editing. And, and that goes with, um, along with, I think, another issue that rose up last week, the Jeff Hardy angle. Uh, where, uh, from what I told that, so I saw kind of the aftermath YouTube uh, clip from it. Now for something a little lighter. So, yeah. <laughs> listen, yeah, DUIs. Um, so apparently <laughs> Jeff Hardy supposedly hit Elias with the car. This is pro mm -hmm. wrestling, folks. Um, <laughs> gotta remind everybody that there what we're talking about. We're not talking about Dragnet anymore, okay? accidents in wrestling. What's that? There have been, like, we could do a top 20 of vehicular accidents <laughs> in wrestling and have runners up. Yeah, uh, Mickey, Mickey James is at least number two with that train incident, oh. right? Well, all right. So, all right. If I had to go number one, if I had to go in number one, Vince. No. No, not Vince in the limo? No. Not because, Vince in the limo? No, because that makes me think of other things that happen. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. All right. It, it's the casket of Big Show's dad being pulled by. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's nice, number man. one in my head. Yeah, because yeah. I always think of that. Yeah, always. So, so you, so you would definitely put that over. Rock, I did it for you, Rock. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. did it for the people. That was pretty spectacular. <laughs> anyways, anyways, the point is, so this is Friday night. Um, uh, we were, I think, maybe three days into active protests. And starting to see um, things kind of escalate, and uh, of course we had an image all over all over social media and television of of uh, Jeff Hardy being led away in handcuffs, which mm -hmm. seemed a little off. Um, uh, maybe not great for for Friday night. Obviously, I mean he's probably used to it. I, well, <laughs> but I mean, other than the question of we're really going to use his real DUI history as a storyline now, like. And and right on the heels of the Road Warriors special on Dark Side of the Ring. Too. Oh yeah, yeah, that was only a couple weeks ago. That. Like you'd think they wouldn't want to, because it's not like this is really long ago in Jeff's history. Yeah, like this is yeah. seven months ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This, this is seven months ago was the most recent incident. I, like I. Oof, oof. So, I, so there, there is that kind of, uh, I guess we can call it tone deafness to to what's going on there. Um, I mean, taping schedules can probably be blamed, but still, like, there, something, no, nobody's saying anything, and and I think that's unfortunate. Um, but uh, it, it it kind of leads to you know, we're we're kind of used to WWE being a little tone deaf in situations like this. Like I suppose a lot tone deaf. A lot a tone lot. deaf. I, 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 I think we can officially change that stance from a little to a lot. Yeah, yeah. To quite a bit. Yeah. yeah. They did um, come around uh, finally on Tuesday, although I think a lot of companies were coming around on Tuesday in, in their official responses um, to everything going on, uh, having an official statement, um, a lot of them being, uh, you know, justifiably uh, uh, scrutinized for those things, uh, WWE included. Um, although it, it, you know, seeing a little bit, it, it, they did have a good discussion, it seemed, on backstage last night. Uh, mm -hmm. WWE backstage or yeah. FS1 talk show. Um, so like, thankfully we have that to talk about, uh, moving our, our our show back a day. So, I mean, it, it's it's kind of a give and take there. Um, you know, generally a tone deaf company, but I, I'm amazed and maybe they simply just couldn't, or maybe it's because it's more of a Fox production than a WWE production. I, I'm heartened a little bit that they let them do a frank discussion on the topic. And we're talking is Renee Young, CM Punk, uh, Mark Henry, and Booker T. So kind of the perfect panel for this, it seems. Um, and there was a few clips that were shared around CM Punk making probably the biggest news, probably mostly because he's CM Punk. Um but uh, and I think it was the first time he's been on in months at this point. I think before the quarantine, for um, sure. No, he no, no, he was on a couple weeks. ago. He was okay. I was, yeah, it, it was it was um he was on whenever they showed uh the WrestleMania three on FS one. Oh okay, yeah, I remember cool. he was he was on to talk with to Ricky Steamboat oh, cool. about the match with Savage. Ooh, that sounds like that's worth going back and watching. Yeah. Um. So so kudos for them to having a platform and 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 having this conversation. 
uh, as well. But uh, I didn't know if you guys had any thoughts, saw any of those. I, I watched a little bit of the clips from last night. Um, I, I think Punk was pretty well spoken mm-hmm. on the topic. Um, CM Punk is someone who mm, I can disagree with on a lot of things. First, I've agreed with him for a while. So Yes, exactly. Th- th- basically, this is the CM Punk that we all kind of remembered and hoped that he was in real life mm-hmm. before some things happened after he left the company. Um, it, was, it, was, it was well said. Uh, I I think I think that knowing, ev- like especially he's like in the heart of Chicago, so I'm sure yeah. he's seen a lot of stuff go on. You know, coming up through the Indies and everything like that. Like, it's it's something. It's a conversation that has to be had. I'm glad they're able to have it. Um, I. I always wish they could go a little bit more in depth, but for other reasons, I understand why they don't. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it, it was a it was it was a good, it was a good statement to be made. And I I was going to say I appreciate what um, Punk said. Um, he admitted he had no right to tell um, African Americans how to feel. He was like, look, straight up, I'm just a white guy. I can't tell you how to feel. I can't tell you how to process feelings. Um, all I can do is just share my views and hope to come together with you in some sort of way. And he straight up said, that's what we need to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I appreciate that. I want to see more of that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's <laughs> Yeah, this is going to sound controversial. Um, and I'm starting to see more of that in, in the industry. Um, just a little bit more. Um, I, and it was just, so, I, I appreciate that vulnerability from him. Absolutely. And I think it, I think it resonates, um, uh, you know, a lot of us are kind of trying to come to terms, you know, with those kinds of things and figure out, like, what can we do? What can we say? And it is like, you don't have to say anything, you know, like the, the Amplify, shut up, listen, is is really important right now, I think, in this situation. So... Um, yeah, so, I mean, so we had that going on. Um, uh, we had, uh, a lot of, and, and, and Tina, you were actually, um, you know, kind of turning it back around cause I think we're done with the negative here for a little bit. I think we've covered it. Uh, okay. <laughs> there was a lot of positivity. Uh, 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 Matt Carlin's, we had a good back and forth over the weekend about seeing, um, pro wrestling activism, <laughs> <laughs> uh, including somebody that we've worked with here uh, locally, uh, I believe down in Louisville, if I'm not mistaken, Charlie Cruel. Um, she's worked with us in the Angel Gate promotion, and, and she's um, um, on board with the Fight Underground that we've been working with. Uh, she was she was out and giving updates from uh, out out in the protests. Uh, MV Young up and was at the Brooklyn uh, protests over the weekend. Um, so so like that's been really cool to see that positivity you saw. Uh, uh, I know PB Smooth has been sharing a lot of stuff. Um, there was uh, apparently, I, I guess it should be expected, but I guess there was, of course, some flashback when you know when people were talking about things, and I guess some promoters were telling people they wouldn't work with them anymore for supporting Black Lives Matter. Um, to which um, I know Max, I believe, up your way, Tina was one of the promoters that said when we come back, oh. Joey Ryan started it with bar wrestling, if I recall, saying if yeah, you- Joey Ryan, yeah, Joey Ryan um, started with his LA promotion with bar wrestling. Max um, did follow suit with his promotion out here in Everett, mm-hmm. and there's and there's just been others that have been like totally supportive of it um, in the movement as well. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's just like kind of before the pandemic hit. Man, it was just like I wish we had um so so that everyone got a more diverse picture. I wish for the culture that for the culture show for the collective had went on back. Yeah. Um I, I wish um the the show that Faye Jackson was gonna put on, I wish she had the ability to put that on and stuff like that. Um <laughs> because it was it was ju- just just um, it was just starting to gain traction and starting to become more prevalent, you know? So, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
And, but at the time, yeah, you do, you do have, I, I'm not going to mince words. You do have shitty promoters yeah. that still think that unfortunately. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, you know, you have that. And, and I think when you look at some rosters and, and it, it, you can kind of figure that out too. I, I've kind of looked around and saying, seeing trends, I guess you could say, um, with things like that too. And, uh, yeah, it, it, so so it it's it's been interesting there. Um, I know Sunny has been thrown under the bus, uh, uh, both threw herself under the bus. And she back, threw herself under the bus and, and, back, and, and backed over herself a couple of times. Um, you can and only I, get that if you subscribe to her OnlyFans. That's right. That's right. You know, Thank you. I was trying to walk you into what, that one. <laughs> what made it so bad? Not so much the, the stuff that's going on. I think another thing too tells you like how. Bar, how she's trying to grasp on her glory days. Mm. She went after Jordan Grace. Mm. Yeah, and and Jordan Grace, I have to say, she's been one of the best voices in wrestling that I've seen around all of this, like especially with quarantine stuff. Like she's been just Venmoing people cash to help pay for mm-hmm. bills and mm-hmm. groceries mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Like she doesn't have to do that shit. No. But yeah, she's she like seems a, she seems like a genuinely just amazing person. Person who who for who who expressed her views mm-hmm. about what Sunny tweeted because Sunny had a similar sentiment to Jackson Riker. Mm-hmm. So so she expressed her views on that, and then Sunny went full Sunny. Oh. She went full ECW in mid nineties. Oh, was there like a subtler tweet before she got kind of nasty with the language? I, I think it was. I think it was a yeah. um a sub tweet. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It was basically, oh, I guess everyone can call me names, but the minute I call, I use something else, you all come after me type thing. And we're like, um, yes, because that thing is very Gork. wrong. Yes. Yeah. Or can well, we cut in with it, your positivity for a second? Yes, please. This is a perfect point for it, maybe. Um, Drake Maverick just signed a new contract. <sighs> oh, thank you. He is not the champion. He is not the champion. But he signed a new contract to NXT. Good for him. Good for Drake. Good for Drake. Like on camera. Triple H came out and gave him the Cedric Alexander treatment. Nice. I I am so uh, yay. <laughs> no. Oh, fuck you, Dave. Dave, this is a yay. I need a more enthusiastic. But no. yay. Dave? But no, no, more no, no. Enthusiastic. Dave, more enthusiastic. <laughs> Dave, I need this. He is Rockstar goddamn Spud. He kept me watching Impact for six to eight months. Oh, no, no. <laughs> so no, 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 no. I'm, po- I'm positive for Drake. I'm just saying the Cedric Alexander treatment. I was going to say, I hope he doesn't also get the no, later Cedric Alexander. He's going to get pushed to a tag team and buried in to be a year fair, or two. Cedric, at least have a job. No, no to be fair, you know Cedric, if, Cedric had a great run. In two and a half years, if Drake Maverick is teaming with the equivalent of Ricochet, who would probably be mm, our buddy Walking Wild? Sure, hell yeah, let's do it. <laughs> All these are good. I'm Tina, before the positive bro- broke in, I think you were about to say something. I forgot, actually. That's okay. It's probably, it's <laughs> Damn probably, it, I'm sorry, Tina. I'm sorry. It, it, it's probably about Sunny, and we gave her too much time. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, this oh. is she was bearing, uh, not really bearing, but she was just piling on from the yeah. stuff that um, with Hannah Kamor and what was going on with oh, her. And so. oh, oh, yeah. Oh. Right, yeah. Yeah. That's where the whole, yeah. She started before. That's why, you know, I hate to say it, it's 2020. You forget that was only a, a, like a week and a half ago. I know, right. That, and I know, Sunny right. started a pile we, on. Whoa, if she was stronger, she, I, I never thought about killing myself. I'm like, 2020 yeah. oh. been a long decade, guys. It, it, it's yeah it, it's yeah it's so long like we i literally today got got like a conversation we're gonna be doing a wrestling with depression conversation with drake Brad, braddock about wrestlers dealing with depression mm-hmm. and it feels like like it feels so long ago i'm just like <laughs> oh man but we're not tackling all these other issues <laughs> but i guess that's why we're here tonight uh but, um oh, just, and just because it's 2020 during the show 5.5 earthquake in, in Los Angeles. Wait, tonight? Yeah, just like uh, 20 minutes ago. Jeez. <laughs> just pick one. Just pick one and drill down <laughs> on it. That's, that's, we can't. Hey, 
At least it's not an earthquake at Yellowstone where we have where we have a super volcano. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Positive things. You know what? I was positive <laughs> this weekend for me seeing Dave. Flies on Broadway. Flies, flies, no, no, we're not doing ads tonight. We're not doing ads tonight. I feel, I feel we're doing ads tonight. Um, okay. But it is good, pizza. Dave. It is good pizza. I I miss it because I didn't. Get and better doors. What's that? And better, better doors. doors. Yes, they reinforce them for you, Dave. <laughs> I have to throw that in. in. Socially distant. <laughs> Dave Batista and Titus O'Neil did a wonderful stream. Watched a little Aww. bit of it. Uh, also, Dave Batista, if you're not following him and you have and, and you are aligned with his ideals, or if you're listening to this show, you probably are. Um, uh, I, fantastic. I, 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 will, I will say this: I posted a tweet from Batista on our Facebook page <laughs> over the weekend, and I I need to say this hashtag out loud to make sure. That it's that it's still fun. Vote blue Tista, no matter who Tista. <laughs> because God damn it, Mike. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because a blue Tista is actually a thing, uh-huh. Uh-huh. and who Tista sounds like the best Doctor Who book I, the Doctor Seuss book I've ever read. <laughs> um. Horton hears a Hootista. Can you imagine that? And Horton is voiced by John Cena because he did the elephant in the fucking commercials. The pistachio commercials. Pistachio yeah. commercial. yeah. yes. That's how we get John Cena versus Batista again. Horton hears a Hootista coming to theater 2023. <laughs> uh, related. Related. Apparently people are calling for Kevin Nash. Related. Related. Uh, uh, Kevin Nash for president is apparently trending over the weekend as oh, well. Yeah. Oh yeah! Oh man! G- g- give me a Nash Batista ticket. <laughs> I'm I'm signing <laughs> up. Oh, no, seriously. seriously, Super Shredder and Drax. Fuck yeah! Sign me the <laughs> fuck up. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean Nash got to work on his grammar a little bit on Twitter, but damn it, it, it it's been pretty great. Uh, <laughs> shit, uh, it's it's been a weird week. It's been oh, well, so Stork, many levels. I'm telling you, I just need to laugh and. Vote Blue Tista, no matter who Tista, <laughs> just made me chuckle to myself for 25 minutes. <laughs> and, and can we just give props to um, Titus O'Neil? Yes. Mm-hmm. He does so... It, it's it's quite interesting. He does so much work. Yeah, yeah. So much charity work. Yeah. And he opened up a dialogue between community and law enforcement. Um, and I think... He is like he is like one of the most active WWC WWE superstars that I've seen that does work for the community. I want to see more. Yeah, and I'll straight up say I want to see more of that. Mm-hmm. It, yeah. it, it just just a small bit, you know. I want to see more of that. I'm You'll- pretty. Mu- I, I wanted to make sure this is accurate. Tyus O'Neill is actually up for ESPN's Muhammad Ali Sports Humanitarian Award. Really? He's up for it, and I hope he wins. Yeah. Because, like, I was seeing Titus O'Neill doing commercials for, um, like, food banks and stuff mm-hmm. on shows that were not affiliated with WWE, and that just made me smile. I noticed Like, that I too. wanted to throw up and, ura, ura, ura. You know, I just, you know what? Hashtag Titus Worldwide. I was just wa- get him around the world. We were like, I don't know, like, like TNT or something, like, whatever Mother's Day stuff was going, well, they were, where they were showing grown ups, and I'm like, Watch them with my mom. I never just watch TV that has commercials like that. I'm just like, why is Ty- wait Titus O'Neil's on this? What is happening right now? Right? Um, and for a guy that and, and Titus has, you know, negligibly, you know, people say, oh, he didn't do much in wrestling or whatnot. I mean, he has. He's still a WWE superstar. He's done stuff. He he's been, you know, at WrestleMania. He's done, you know, he's a former tag team champion. He's a former tag team champion. That is a level of status. And he's yeah. using, even if you can say what, quote, little status he has with WWE to do all these other things and to be an ambassador, you know, if he's like, hey, I may never be a world champion, but I'm doing this with what I got. Like, God bless that guy. That, that's fantastic. And he recognizes, too, that he he um to set the example for the next generation. I think that's what he's trying to do with his voice. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, my God. Yeah. All right. So. So the finalists for, um, because he's one of the finalists, apparently. It's Nelson Cruz of the Minnesota Twins, Kevin Love of the Cleveland Cavaliers, uh, Devin and Jason McCourty of the Patriots, Maya Moore of the Minnesota Lynx, and Tyus O'Neill. Those are the nominees. That's it. 
Jeez. So, so good on you, Titus O'Neil. Keep being awesome. I feel really sad because I think they did their oh they did their discussion on Instagram and uh, I'm going to drop this into the chat at least. I, I'm not sure if I did before, uh, but yeah, they did an Instagram live with the the some Tampa police, um, the uh, chief and the sheriff. It looks like from the county. Uh, mm. so that, that was a really, like, I, I only had a chance over the weekend to catch a couple minutes of it, but it would sound like it was a really good spot there. Um, how about, and, and how about, let's say one, one other really ahead. positive thing about Titus is after what he was, went through with, for such, and who knows what really happens with Vince's mind, but being pulled basically from WrestleMania a couple of years ago. Mm. Oh, I remember and, that. Yeah. And yeah. we're, you know, I was whatever. Was and and we, still, I was actually, I was actually there for that. Oh, that was 20. And that was 29 that we were at. Yeah. That was 29. No, um, that was, was that 29? Okay. That was 29 because it, the match was, that was long ago. Um, no, it wasn't. It couldn't have been. Cause that was the Daniel Bryan retirement show. Wait a minute! Then what WrestleMania are you talking about? Yeah, was he? It's not the one with the, uh, with like, uh, uh, Funkadactyls and stuff, right? Oh no, that's that's what I'm thinking of. Then. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking of too. I can't remember who the other team was. No, because what he got pulled because he he I guess he playfully hit Vince or something, and that was during oh. the Daniel Bryan retirement announcement. Oh. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, okay, yeah. I remember that. I remember that whole thing now. Okay. Yeah, it was weird. Oh, okay, yeah. That's, yeah, okay. I get it. I remember that now. Mm-hmm. I, I was going to say, I'm like, pulled from WrestleMania, because the only match I could think of that was pulled from WrestleMania in recent memory was that one from 29. Mm-hmm. Okay. No, it was, it yeah, was he went. Much. He went He went to pull him, and he was suspended. Yep. yep. Yeah, because it, it was, was WrestleMania 32. I, I just looked it up. WrestleMania 32. He was suspended for ninety days. Jeez. No, I thought it was sixty. Was it? Was it, it may, well, it may have been sixty, then went to nine, or it may have been ninety, then went down to sixty. Okay, because it was but, but the suspension. That much I do remember. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah, but it was right over. The suspension happened. Was going to end like a couple weeks after WrestleMania. Yeah, that's a shame. Oh boy. Well. Sorg, Sorg. And, yeah. and for him I'm, to keep up as positive as he's had when that's mm-hmm. happened, when you have other superstars who have been slighted, for, for, has had less slights, and then all of a sudden you see them asking for the release. And, you know, like I said, there are certain people you never hear anything bad about. And mm-hmm. He's one of them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's just he recognizes the star power that he has. Yeah. And that's what's great and how to turn that into a positive. Uh, Tina, you've been sharing some positive stuff on the Facebook group. I thank you for that. Um, <laughs> she, I try. You, she posts. <laughs> she posts this uh, this uh, resource. It was like we'll get to it in a second. Why? Uh, and, and she said, "I'll stop if you want me to." And I'm like, "No, it's wrestling related and it's very topical, and we need this stuff here." Uh, so yes. so thank you for that. And please don't stop if you come up with any other resources stories that relate to this. Um, but there is, so this is wrestler related. This was a resource put together by a couple wrestlers and Tina, I'll, I'll let you tell us uh, about this and I'll share it with you guys on screen on the video. Okay. So the number one question, um, as a black person mm-hmm. during this time, um, I would get from white people is how do I educate myself? How do I become an ally, um, in this movement? I don't know where to start. Bianca Belair, the EST, and Montez Ford um, put together this fabulous um, website, um, just different pieces on how to get started, what type of conversation to have, books, media clips. Um, It's just like a wealth of information, a list of Black-owned businesses you can support. It's, It's pretty good how to volunteer. And you guys know, like, especially with Bianca Belair, she's always been about, she's always been about culture and I love her for it. Um, Again, I'm not to go off on a little bit of tangent here. Um, I didn't have a Bianca Belair (laughs) when I was growing up. I had Jackie. I think that was the only one. 
in in my oh. lifetime, I had I had Jackie and Dark and, Journey and Sweet Sapphire and Sweet Sapphire, Sweet Sapphire. Um, Bianca Belair, Sasha Banks, uh, Simone Johnson, although she's not quite there yet, Caden Carter, Naomi, Naomi, uh, and and that's just to name a few. Um, it's so cool to like see like there's more Ember Moon, um, mm. who's out right now. Um, and it's jazz. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Yeah. <laughs> um, back when I was in high school. Um, but it's just so cool to like be present in our culture and not, and not afraid to show it. And I love her for it. And she opens up that dialogue and just like resources, books, businesses, how to volunteer. Um, and it's all right there in that website, movies, um, just like different me um, social media posts as well, too. It's a great resource, and 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 you know it's it's hopefully helpful for anybody that that is uh, moved by the things that are happening in the last week uh, with uh, the uh, George Floyd uh, protests, and and want to answer those questions and maybe have been afraid to. So um, hopefully that's helpful to people. So and and you know again coming from the wrestling world, and that's that's great. I think there's a lot of. Um, you know, we talk about Tyus O'Neill, but he's not the only one. There, there's these two. Uh, it, it feels like everybody's kind of trying to uh, do positivity. I mean, we hear New Day talk about all the time about the positive uh, and uh, they're, personas they're putting out, right, Tina? Exactly. And oh, holy crap! Um, uh, it, it's just it, it's starting to become more prevalent now. Sorry, mm -hmm. as I go off on a tangent, I'm not an expert, not in the industry, just what I see as a fan. Let's preface that right now. No, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. But but you know, you still represent the fan they're reaching out to to, to, to try to normalize this 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 view, right? Okay. Let real talk right here. Okay. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, real talk right here. I went to an indie promotion mm -hmm. over the. Um, I want to say it was last summer. I looked around. I I'm not quite sure because it was a small like dark club, but I think I was the only. African American person <laughs> at that promotion at that show, um, uh, but it, it like I said, it's it's just it just makes it so much easier mm. to find people to in, in such a in in such the industry as a um, in the wrestling business to look up to, um, dude. I I can only, AJ Junior. Um, his favorite his favorite are Ricochet Cedric Alexander. Um, and Roman currently, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. especially, especially Ricochet, because Ricochet, um, like, like AJ is biracial. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's like someone you can connect to. Um, you can connect. Um, and he sees it like, and just like in the superhero aspects, simple thing is MVP and his gear, whether it's the Punisher or whether it's Black Panther, yeah. you're, you're finding it more in the culture. And that's what I appreciate. Again, I'm sorry. It, it it just feels like it's it, it's coming into our own like subtle different ways, and it's awesome that more kit more um, you can find more where people can connect to because African Americans are wrestling fans too, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. yeah, it, yeah, I absolutely. mean, it started in the days of oh gosh, um, earliest mem earliest memory from at least from what my grandma would tell me because she was. The, between her and my dad, they were the ones who got us start. We started um, her getting to see Bobo Brazil, and then my dad always constantly watching World Class Championship Wrestling on ESPN back in the day. Yeah, I'm that old. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing the math like, over here. I'm not doing the math. <laughs> but seeing Iceman Parsons and stuff, and, and World Class and stuff okay. like that. So it's just like you find like little can having like little connections like that. Um, where wrestling is actually kind of like a comfort for me. Um, I'm not going to get it, uh, especially with my upbringing. It, it's like something that I can escape. Uh, I was able to escape with, and I still do in some sort of ways. But it's kind of sad, as I mentioned before, with statements from pub from from wrestlers saying that I saying that the culture doesn't belong it's just like it gives me comfort that knowing like xavier woods Big E, yeah kofi yeah. cedric alexander's image before ricochet mvp um and the list just goes on and on titus o'neill it's just like 
there's that connection there and it's just awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I didn't need to go on a tangent. I am, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's absolutely fine. No, that's, it's, it's what I need to be yeah. saying. It, it's a hard thing for us to say, uh, on the show week to week. And I'm, I'm glad you're here to, to, to help us with this. So. Yeah. And plus it's an emotional issue. Like yeah. we're all going to get worked up about it because it's not only like an emotional time right now. This is yeah. something that's been in most of our lives for at least 20 years. Mm-hmm professional wrestling like 30 at least like i said at least like me i think i'm about the 28 because i forget exactly what year uh jake the snake bit the arm off the macho man but you know whatever that was about, about 1991 i'm sorry yeah okay so, so there we go so i'm about 32 but jesus uh-huh. 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 Just hit. Don't do the math. Don't oh, do the math. Do the math. I can't he, help he, it. I'm an engineer. I know. I know. <laughs> I, I, do the math immediately. I, I started watching around six months into Hogan's first title run in, in what was it, 84? Oh, 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 oh. Uh, yeah. 84. Oh, oh shit. I was a toddler. Uh huh. That's why I said I'm the old I, I'm the old guy here. You see all those white hair? Uh huh. I earned uh-huh. them. I earned them. Damn it. There it is. There it is. Oh. By the way, what's I that? What's gray hair? No. Uh, <laughs> or, or, yes. I, I feel like we need to keep the positivity going. Okay. Um, I'm not taking a break. Let's just keep rolling with it. Yeah. No. That's <laughs> Don't fine. figure um, we're done with the show. I need. I need to point out a Twitter account. Okay. That has given me the most smiles possible this past week. Um and this will this will lead into our big question. Okay. Okay. So Perfect. Okay. Perfect. I yeah. need that right now. Yeah, that's what I figured. Um so there's a Twitter account called at that's our manga. Oh yes, thank you. Oh God. Oh my God. Oh. Yes. So yes. so if you oh. haven't if you haven't seen this Twitter account there, there are a lot of great Twitter accounts on there that use wrestling content and utilize it. Like wrestling gifts is a good one. Simpsons wrestling memes is a great one. But uh, we Rick Rude taking atomic drops was another good Rick, one. Rick Rude taking yes. atomic yeah. drops. Yes, yeah, I think this is from the I same believe creators. That's, I, believe I believe that's at Rick Rude sells. Dude, by the way, the Rick Rude taking atomic uh, uh, drops uh, shared the Mongo thing, and that's how he discovered it. Yes. Yes. Um, so. At that's our Mongo. If you have not experienced this, please do. Um, it's it's just gifts of nature's sweetest angel, <laughs> Mongo McMichael, uh, from WCW. Just the best sell jobs you've ever seen in your life. No, no, <laughs> Sorg, they're not. Sorg, you're wrong. <laughs> How did he just react to water? He, he so, reacted to water like it was all right, acid. Hold on, hold on. Uh, all right, so, so, all right. Before, before I explain how this dovetails into our big question, um, if you go to that's our manga, I can't stop watching and, it. And I know you cannot. <laughs> it's literally impossible to turn away. Um, oh bef- God! If you feel like you need a companion piece to that's our manga, um. I highly recommend going to Uproxx, going to going to with Spandex, and reading Brandon Stroud's old reviews of Nitro, uh-huh. and just looking for Mongo stuff, uh-huh. because he also talked about Mongo before Mongo became a wrestler, uh-huh. and will highlight every single outfit that his dog Pepe has. Mm-hmm. Those are my favorite uh-huh. days. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, because not only was Mongo amazing in the ring, Sword, don't stop me. Mm-hmm. He was also amazing on the stick and always brought his dog with him. That's right, Sean Waltman. <laughs> he beat you to the punch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mongo was Waltman before Waltman was cool. Oh, there's some they context had, for you. They, they still had the goodest boys ever. <laughs> but so this dovetails into our big question. And my answer, uh, the, the question is what really, really really stupid minutia in wrestling is the hill you are willing to die on. <laughs> Mine is that Steve Mungo McMichael was one of the best members of the four horsemen. <laughs> oh my gosh. One of the best. Oh. That is like he's not in the top four but he's in the top five. 
And wow. he's the thumb the, of the horseman. He's the he, thumb of the horseman then. Yeah. If he's he, number five. He's the, he's the JJ <laughs> on my Mount Rushmore. So what is on my Mount Horsemore? The wrestling okay? version of defending Ben Affleck's Daredevil movie for me. Yes, exactly. Okay. Sorg, see, okay. this is Sorg, we've been podcasting for so long, you finally understand. Well, I feel like you question me every week on every stance I take, so I don't know where to start. <laughs> oh, no, no. See, this, this, is the thing. this is the judgment-free zone. Just like I will expect none of you to judge me on my views of Steve Mongo McMichael. I will defend Lita <laughs> as, as one of the important uh, women wrestlers of the 2000s. Uh, okay. uh, uh, that that is mine. That is mine. I know some people okay, question. Why is, that, why is that a petty hill to die on? I, I don't. I don't I, think I, that. I, listen, you know, I, I've someone had, saying listen, Lita's not good. I've had to defend Lita on this show since episode one. Uh, so. All right. Yeah. Okay. But for free. Okay. I, I was gonna say that's more of a mountain. She's a hall of famer. Yeah. Yeah. By the way. By the way, Steve Mongo make Michael at WrestleMania before Lita. Thank you very much. Wait. What? WrestleMania. WrestleMania 11. Oh, that is was, true. Oh, he yeah. was there. He was, with, he was there. Um, he was uh, like the, the posse for uh, what's his he was face? In the posse LT. with LT. LT. Yeah. Born yeah. Sailor. So Steve Mungo McMichael has a WrestleMania appearance and is 1 0 as a manager. Mm. 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 <laughs> better, better. I was going to mention someone he, he had a better record than, but I don't want to mention. Better him. record than Ole Anderson. Okay. That's better. That's, uh, yeah. Hence, thumb of <laughs> Mount Horsemore. Horsemore. Mount Horsemore. He's the Mount thumb. Horsemore. Wow. Uh, Tina, Dave, do you have one? I do have one. Okay. Oh. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Judgment That's build up. Note, Tina. That's Judge a build up. No, uh, there, there's going to be a lot of judgment. No, and... the judgment free. No. Judgment free um, zone. I don't think the Divas title actually looks that bad, y'all. Okay. 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 The, yeah, butter, okay. the butterfly belt stood out. Mm -hmm. I, I don't it think it was. Did. Yeah. I don't think it was that bad. I, I I think I think we did a lot of ma uh, getting mad for women on this show when we saw it. Like I think we felt they deserved better. That's mostly because we didn't talk to women. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's. <laughs> look at the record. And I actually, and I actually, and the cool thing about it was the early NXT women's title was a little bit of a nod to it that I thought mm -hmm. was kind of mm -hmm. cool with the mm -hmm. light pink. There, yeah, yeah. There are definitely some pink tones in it. But at least, at least the divas belt was a proper sized belt. Mm -hmm. And it didn't look teeny tiny, teeny tiny, teeny tiny if someone over a hundred pounds actually wore it. Oh, Dave, hold on. Is that shade toward AEW right here? <gasps> it could be, yes. <laughs> lovely, lovely. You love you love to see it. Oh. Mm -hmm. but yeah, no judgment here, Tina. That's 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 no, uh, fine. But to be no, but to be fair with AEW, their women's time. Title. It's a nod to Japanese promotion and how their titles are styled. So. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's a lot of nods yeah. to Japanese. But it still looks a little silly on Nyla <laughs> <laughs> when she held it. Yep. Oh, but it also looked like it was going to fall off. Uh, uh, who was the first one? Um, Rio. 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 Yeah. yeah. I mean, Rio. Yeah. Rio. We, yeah. We've had two spectrums of the size problem there. So, yeah. Was, <laughs> um, Dave, Dave, do you have a hill yeah, that you're Dave, Dave, <sighs> Yeah, Dave, what's your hill? Okay. Wrestling, and this may be something other people agree with. It was a lot. You could enjoy, uh, am I, uh, and this is going to sound really bad. When you didn't know your favorite wrestler was a racist, sexist piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> so big Jackson Riker fan, were you? Oh, pfft. I don't know. That's a hill to die on. I think that's just a. Oh, wish no, 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 no. Say this is someone growing up who was a Hogan fan. Uh huh. Who Amen. was a Warrior fan? Amen. Because honestly, no, we knew Hogan was you know, back then. I have we, a, we I have it. I have a, But uh, I have a, I have another hill. <laughs> yes. Climb it. I don't want to do that with all of them. Let me point. Let me point the hand out. 
I guess I guess probably because I, I mean I watched WWF or mm-hmm. um at the, a little bit when I was a kid, but I never I mean I understand they're larger than life. I never really understood Hulk Hogan and Ultimate Warrior. Huh. Mm-hmm. Huh. Yeah. So like it, like late 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 eighties early nineties I was pretty much tuning into WCW where I was a fan of Sting and Dusty Rhodes Get it. and Lex Luger. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, maybe it was just me though, but <laughs> oh, dear, I never I'm really not... I you you were you were attuned to a I different never... style of top guy, uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, or yeah, guys. Because no. I don't think there was a lot of women's wrestling back then for them either, right? Uh, no. Yeah. Yeah. No. Huh. Now, Dina, were you in Cincinnati at the time? Yes. Okay, okay that could. I'm thinking that could I, we're, we're not you know Cincy and Pittsburgh are not physically that far apart. No, but, it's about a, it's about a couple cult- hours drive. Yeah, but culturally, that's more. It's a southern. huge difference. Like there's a yeah. lot of that that Kentucky influence across the border, right? If I yeah, because the yeah. Uh, the uh, Kentucky border, well yeah. the <laughs> well the yeah. Kentucky and Indiana border is just not even like depending on where you are in the city. Um, I know for me, Kentucky was only 10 minutes away. I know a best friend in high school. She was about 15 minutes away from the Indiana border. And after all, since he's airport is located Cincinnati, in Kentucky. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, just right. Covington, Kentucky. I'm yeah. sorry, not Covington. Um, Erlanger. Erlanger. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, flew, I flew in it once. I flew in it once for work. And that Holy is crap. your geography lesson. There, for there's your geography lesson. But <laughs> I'm saying the difference why, you know, you may have gotten WC. But sin- it sounds weird. But to me, since he's always been, a, even though it's in Ohio, a southern city. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, basically. I mean, Pittsburgh's borderline. Part. Pittsburgh, yeah, I mean, yeah. we're Appalachia. <laughs> you know, yeah. We're, we're, yeah. We're, we're Appalachia. But we still are. You, Pittsburgh's closer, you know. Cleveland, Buffalo, Erie, Pittsburgh, which is more of the urban, there. which is more of the yeah. urban cities, to be yeah. honest. Yeah, totally. And, and, and honestly, you got and with Hogan and with Warrior, I hate to say, being a teenage boy, you know, they were action heroes. That yeah. was yeah. GI Joe. That was, yep. you know, that they they were literally action figures come to life. Mm-hmm. And I remember talking to my friends in middle school and we were like, oh, no, no. Hogan's been wrestling for a couple years now and there's no way you could be on steroids. And, <laughs> and, and for this long, we were we were brilliant teenage boys. Mm-hmm. For, for you can no way you'd be on steroids for this long and keep up. You would just blow up and you would be horrible things happening to you that he has to be working. Like, mean, to be fair, you weren't wrong. but yeah i I was never a hogan or warrior guy because like i saw savage and jake roberts and those were my guys they were the first thing i saw those were the first heel and face i gravitated to before i even knew what those terms meant and then after that i went for people who were kind of like them so like your Owen Hart's, your mm-hmm. Kurt Hennings, um, you know, stuff like that. Like the Rock and Owen Hart was my jam, and then he kicked Brett's leg out of his leg, and I loved it <laughs> so much. <laughs> uh, uh, sorry, again, some interesting news. Uh, so oh, from that. <laughs> As we're Uh-oh. looking back at all, and I, I'm sorry I didn't vet you guys before you came on, before I invited you on here today at the last minute. Uh, we have homework. Yeah, and I don't oh, know if you watch or remember. <laughs> and uh, but, uh, Dave, Tina, did you recently <clears throat> watch this? You maybe you may just remember it from what we're talking about. Uh, uh, you're gonna have I, to. I have a feeling both of you guys will remember. Yeah, it it's not that far. So we're going back right now to 2012, where. Oh, God. Uh, February. <laughs> what's that? I said, "Oh God, if only." Yeah, simpler times, right? Uh, way simpler times. Still uh, problematic on commentary, but way simpler times. Yeah, yeah. Um. So, so we have CM Punk versus Brian Daniel Bryan. Excuse me. Uh, champion versus champion. 
Uh, mm-hmm. We are in well into the SmackDown Super Show era, and uh, leading up to WrestleMania something something. Uh, uh, I believe this is leading up to the WrestleMania where Daniel Bryan lost in six seconds. Uh, I think, and, and I feel like we're leading up to didn't didn't CM Punk lose this belt uh, to Rock in no time? Yep. Yeah. Very shortly after this. That oh, was right. the... so, so keep in mind, this yeah. is a champion versus champion match mm-hmm. in February, late February. Yes. By the by the five minute mark in WrestleMania, neither of these men will have their championship belts. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, uh, and I, I I can't remember what Punk even did that year. Uh, oh, so, I know he did that year. Hmm. Uh, that was the year he fought Randy Orton, I think. Oh, okay. Wasn't no, well, no wait, maybe it wasn't. Maybe. Wait, look at it. Either way, no, I need to, <laughs> so I'm going look. February, I believe, twenty fourth. Uh, it's champion versus champion main event of SmackDown Super Show. Uh, I don't even know what day of the week it was at the time. Uh, but <laughs> and uh, so we have this. Uh, Daniel Bryan is. Oh, this was this was pre AJ going crazy, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, no. So I think wasn't she borderline? Oh, okay, no. Um, this wasn't the, this wasn't the year that Punk lost the title to The Rock. Okay, this is the year before, this, isn't it? This was the year with Punk and Jericho. Okay, okay, okay. Where, where oh. Jericho wanted to give him a tattoo, apparently. What? <laughs> they were doing... Oh, you haven't heard that story. I know. Uh, at some point during the feud, Jericho was originally going to give CM Punk a tattoo. <laughs> like an actual tattoo in the middle of Raw. <laughs> it didn't happen. Oh, the things that could have been. This is, this is the same... All right, so this is the same year where Ryan did lose in 18 seconds. Okay. Um. This is the one where Kane fought Randy Orton. Big Show and Cody Rhodes, which is a great match if mm-hmm. you haven't seen it. Um, uh, Triple H, it's the it's the last Triple H Taker match. Oh, before the last Triple H Taker match. Okay, okay. <laughs> so the I skipped wrestling that year. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, honestly, watching this uh, match from SmackDown, I don't blame you. So okay, few notes I have. First of all. It's SmackDown. Josh Matthews is on commentary with Michael Cole. Which already just gave me pause. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we had feuding um, GMs in... Uh, uh, I, why am I Mr. forgetting John name? Laurinaitis! John Laurinaitis and Teddy John Long. John Laurinaitis, Gorg! Yes. Long People before, power! Long before name. Teddy Long tried to freak it with uh, the Rev's mom at RWA mm-hmm. last year. Uh, yeah. and, uh, it, so, so there was a lot of, man, going into this, it was a little bit of, I forgot how good this era was that we had these guys on top a little bit. Uh, maybe I'm in just the window into it, uh, in the first five minutes of this match, uh, seeing these guys go at it because this was a, Oh, wait, Oh, wait a second. So this is like during that time where, um, they did take that infamous photo, right? I yeah. think so. I think yeah, it, it feels like it is. Um, Daniel Bryan is firmly heel. I think this is what the no yes movement just starting. Maybe uh, this is this is no Daniel. Bryan. This, this is, is no, no no Daniel no, Bryan. No. Yeah, before we had comedy, uh, uh, hell hell no or anything like that, uh, yeah. happening. So um, we have the match, which is fantastic for a few minutes, right, Mike? You're with um, me. sure. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I, I, no, but all right, so here's the thing: the wrestling is fine for the first couple minutes, but I can't focus on it because Michael Cole is talking about Chris Brown and a Twitter oh. fight he's had with CM Punk. Yeah, that is an unfortunate which, timing for this which one. Which, in it of itself, is yeah. problematic. But then Booker T has to go and say Chris Brown is not afraid some, to throw some hands, and you know what? We know he's not. Yeah. This is a, a <sighs> miss all the issues happening pre during. I, I, I don't know my Chris oh, Brown post. timeline. It's, it's post. It's post. It's post. Yeah. That's a couple of years post. Post from the COVID yeah. incident. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure Rihanna was working on monster with Eminem at this point. If mm. it hadn't already come out. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, it, 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 it's, it's troubling. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's troubling. 
Um, so I couldn't focus on the beginning parts of the match. But then once Michael Cole, and to his credit, Michael Cole said, we're not going to talk about that because he didn't expect <laughs> me to say that. Were they live so, at this okay. point? They weren't live at this point, were they? I don't okay. think so, which is even worse. Uh, Tina, go, so, go sorry. ahead. Go, sorry, fine. I was no. about to say, so bless his heart. Michael Cole was trying to be Mauro Ronaldo before Mauro Ronaldo was actually at WWE. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Michael Cole... Michael Cole and Josh Matthews is the most underrated commentary team in WWE. And that's, that's Hmm. legit. When Josh Matthews wasn't a heel douchebag and neither was Michael Cole, they were actually very good on commentary because it reminded me of like, uh, I'm trying to think of the example I just had in my head, like gorilla and Tony. It didn't remind me of gorilla and Bobby. It reminded me of gorilla and Tony. Because you had a straight newsman and a former wrestler who can give some color and also do a little play by play and have some good banter. Like that was too that was so brief though. I know, but mm-hmm. It, mm-hmm. it was it was lovely for while it lasted. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was. Because 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 they weren't over the top personalities, but they're able to tell a story enough yeah. with mm-hmm. their voice. And you know what? Michael Cole and Josh was brief too. So mm-hmm. Yeah. A lot of transition around this time. Yeah. Uh, so we had the classic. Um, we had a pin, we had a foot on the ropes or something, if I recall, for the first uh, well, one. At least well, the second first, one did. No, first of all, what happened was uh, Daniel Bryan was losing and he was the heel. Mm-hmm. He tried to leave the match. Mm-hmm. Sheamus, his WrestleMania opponent, ran out and threw Bryan back in the ring. Mm-hmm. And CM Punk pinned him. And then John Laurinaitis, he came out and said, oh, no, that's not <laughs> fair. Let's restart this match. So they restarted the match. And then Daniel Bryan did a roll up with his feet on the ropes and got the win. And then Teddy Long comes out and says, you're going to go one on one with the Undertaker. No, I'm kidding. He didn't say that. He should have said that. Uh, <laughs> that this match is going to be restarted. So I'm like, okay, fine. We've had both restarts. Basically, he may as watch another two out of three falls match. And another two out of three falls match where the finish is bullshit. <laughs> Cause I'm like, okay, maybe now is when we get to the actual wrestling and, uh, nope. Double pin and SmackDown goes off the air. The fuck? <laughs> like Sorg, Sorg, I was never the best student. Um, but I did my homework. Okay. I don't think I want to do homework anymore. <laughs> that's what that's what's gonna happen. Okay, okay. You're having a problem. You're, you're calling out this, our teacher. Is, I am. Because I was I needed a win today. Mm-hmm. I was I was I was sitting down, I was getting ready to watch this match. I'm like, okay, it's CM Punk versus Daniel Bryan. It's about 20 minutes. It's gotta be somewhat good. And then no. It just was not. It was, it was, it was bad. I, I dare say it might be their worst match they've had ever had together. Wow. Wow. So, um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so this experiment's not going well. <laughs> well, oh, yeah, either way, let's see how it goes. We got more videos. Oh, we boy. got more assignments. I this haven't even watched God. this yet. I don't know what this is going to be, but uh, this is going out to you guys, and I hope that I set everything appropriately because we're kind of a lot of uh, uh, on the fly. off the rails on the fly here on this Wednesday night. So if I've done this right, here is your next lesson from Professor Jacob Edwin. My name is Professor Jacob Edwin. This is Wrestling Mayhem Show's weekly assignment. <clears throat> so... Uh, the Diamond Dallas Page story is very fascinating. Uh, he's someone that, if you're not too familiar with his history in pro wrestling, by all means, take the time and actually comb through a lot of his highlights. Uh, but we're going to go to April 26, 1999, and he is going to defend his WCW championship against Sting on Nitro. Oh, okay. <clears throat> this match is... 
very resemblant of matches that you'll probably see today and that they're trading heavy, heavy blows and some of the biggest moves in their arsenal. Uh, please enjoy, study up, and if you have the time, delve into DDP even more than just this little glimpse. Thank you. Okay. There you go, Mike. You, <laughs> you are right, maybe yeah. not ready for this. Couple things. Okay. One, WCW in 1999. Mm hmm. Not great. Okay. Um, I was really hoping he was going to say 1997. So was I. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to, I'm just going to, I know nothing about this match. Mm -hmm. I don't remember it. I think I had actively stopped watching Nitro at this point. Um, I'm going to guess a few things. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to guess. Sorg, all right, let's set the run in meter at three. <laughs> Yeah, that's about what you had on that last match. Technically. Uh oh. I but, think we uh, you broke the work. Okay. Uh, what? Oh no. <laughs> Sorry, you broke. I Are you okay? I, I think I bumped the internet thing and, and lost everything <laughs> for a moment. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. Sorry right, about that. So sword. So sword. We will set the counter at three. Yes. Because I think if you watch WCW from nineteen ninety nine, that's probably an average of how many run ins there were per match. Okay. Do you want to do you want to take the over or the under? Sorg? I'm going to go under because you know me. I always like the positive. That's fine. I'm okay. going to go over. I'm going to go way over. Okay. Um, I'm a, I'm presuming Scott Steiner will be involved. Ooh. Vince Russo might be involved. Mm -hmm. Um, Jeff Jarrett might be involved and call someone slap nuts. Mm -hmm. Uh, who knows? David Arquette might be involved at this point. Mm -hmm. I'm not even sure what's going to happen. Um. But Sorg, I'm also going to hazard a guess that this match doesn't have a clean finish. I well, I don't if, think that happened. If it has a finish, <laughs> you, okay, you said '99, right? Yes, '99. Yeah, April '99. When was it? April '99. April 24th. 24th. April 24th, 1999. Scott I Steiner. Also, I don't think Scott. No, I don't think no. Scott Steiner would be in there. Mm. Uh. -uh. This is Mike's right. There's going to be at least maybe two, three run-ins because mm -hmm. I'm thinking if it's against Sting, it's Wolfpack. Oh, but I oh, no, I think Wolfpack was already dissolved at that point. At 99, yeah, because you got you got to remember once they split, they splintered quickly. It seems a lot longer in our brains because we were watching it week to week. It didn't last long. They went back to like. NWO black and white redux with like the finger poke of doom and shit. Oh like, gosh, I don't. This is ugh. spring, right? I'm trying to figure. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I was in high school. I was a senior in high school, so yeah. <laughs> rub, rub it in, <laughs> Tina. Rub it in. Mm -hmm. Maybe but, eight. Yeah. But um, yeah. So I mean, uh, no, ninety nine. That's right. Am I looking forward to this assignment? N no. <laughs> I, I'm like, I'm like, yeah, Sorg, you pulled it up just briefly. Can we have an alternative incitement? No, 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 no. And, and, and Sorg, Sorg, what, what did you do to Jacob? Why yeah. is he punishing everyone on the show like this? I, I mean, mean does he have something over you? Can, can, can we help out? I can't. Please, no, blink, I, blink, I blink, and we can help. I can't help it. I can't help you <laughs> with this situation. Um. <laughs> all right. Well. Anyways. Well. Okay. So. All right. So one. I looked up DDP versus Sting on Google. Mm -hmm. I don't want spoilers for the match. Okay. The first actual link that I got that was not a video of the match or a recreation of the match in a video game. Sting versus DDP Nitro ninety nine nineteen ninety nine in early nineteen ninety nine. Signs of danger were beginning to appear in WCW. <laughs> That's the first sentence. Yeah. That doesn't make me feel positive about this. So, oh boy. This is <laughs> like, and don't get me wrong, I like DDP. I, I, I've done his yoga program, it's fantastic. I'm not doing it now because quarantine, so fuck it. But. <laughs> 
you actually, you want to know something? I mean, I appreciate DDP as a wrestler, but he was pretty freaking good as a manager too. Mm-hmm. Mm. I, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not familiar. Uh, the Diamond Stud, Scott Hall. Yeah. Oh, wow. Diamond Stud, Scott Hall, Vinny Vegas. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. I wonder who I um, still but, wish showed up at Double or Nothing. Oh, oh, one more thing. Um, again, showing my age. Check out DDP's AWA stuff as a manager too. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is it on on network? I think it's probably. <laughs> I'll look at that. Look at that. Um, just, just type in Diamond Dallas Page. Go as early as you can. <laughs> from what we should be learning to what we did learn this week. Uh, <laughs> oh boy! Oh okay, boy! We learned a lot, but that's like let's let's use this as <laughs> a different thing. We learned a lot about a lot. Yeah. Can we do one good one? Bad? You? Yeah, I guess. I guess. I feel like okay. we did a lot of bad, but I, okay. Uh, Jeez, uh, my, I'm gonna, I'm I, gonna struggle I, thinking of something bad. I kind of have two, but they're both <laughs> like good. Um, uh, I I learned that in the first match on the first in your house pay per view, uh, uh, Bret Hart won over Hasuka. Was that his name? Hasuki? Hakushi. 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 Hakushi with all the letters. Like, yeah, that's Hakushi. Hakushi. Which was a great match, but he got pyro in the yep. opening match, <laughs> beating Hakushi, and he yep. still had to take on Lawler later that night. By the way, um, yep. I was just like, "Huh?" Kiss my foot match, right? I don't know if that was the kiss my foot match. Oh, that wasn't the kiss my foot. It was Mother's yep. Day, and that sounds like a kiss my foot match. <laughs> what, uh, what year was that? No, I feel like that was Sword. a Survivor Series or something, or King of the Ring. That was ninety-five. What, 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 Okay. Was that the one where but, Helen had to throw Helen Hart had to throw in the towel? She was not there. She was at okay. home. Mm-hmm. She was at home for Mother's Day. Bret uh, Hart versus Jerry Lawler came to my foot match was King of the Ring 1995. Yeah. There you go. Because because he, they had, because Jerry had Isaac Yankim in his corner. Right. They were building <laughs> up to that because there was um there were like a, the first King of the Ring qualifier was uh, which involved Mabel. Uh, and do. Adam Bomb, I think. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yes. Yes. Adam Bomb versus Mabel. Yes. Yep. yep. Okay. That's as far as I. And got. by the way, Jeff Jarrett versus. The, uh, now I'm just gonna read all the first round matches because I brought it up. Adam Bo- Mabel defeated Adam Bomb. Mm-hmm. The Undertaker defeated Jeff Jarrett. Hmm. Kama defeated Duke the Dumpster Drosy. Hmm. Shawn Michaels defeated King Kong Bundy. That had to be <laughs> a hot match. Uh, <laughs> Bob Holly. All right. We almost had King Mantar. Mm. Mantar was in a King of the Ring qualifying match, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Bob Holly beat him, thankfully. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Really, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Which incarnation of Holly? Um, Are we talking Spark Plug? I believe spark we're plug. talking Spark Plug. Okay. That's what I thought. I, <laughs> either, it's spark, either it's Spark Plug or Bombastic Bob. It's one or the other. <laughs> spark Plug. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go. Thurman Sparky plug on that. <laughs> Never forget the name of Thurman Plug. Uh, his friends called him Sparky. Uh, the roadie beat Doink the Clown, so we almost had King Doink. Mm-hmm. Uh, Yokozuna beat Lex Luger by countout, and Razor Ramon beat Jacob Blue. No love for Eli Blue, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic! Well. From that, I also learned it's a learn more of a suggestion. Uh, the lost tapes for Sting was kind of fun, mm-hmm. not real deep. It's they're just kind of following along with him, and he's having like Frank, like everybody's out of character, which I can't imagine them doing in 1995. Um, for Slamboree, it's leading into his lights out match with Big Bubba Rogers, aka Big Boss Man, of course. Um, mm-hmm. and uh, the lights out match pretty much meant we used the table. Uh, in interesting ways, we had not learned how to prop the table in the corner, so there was pretty some pretty wild uh, uh, moves uh, happening around that. So, um, Sorg, Sorg, bit of trivia, mm-hmm. um, because we've been talking about getting the wrestling game show back together. Um, bit of trivia: Do you know who took the first table bump out of WrestleMania? Ooh. Mm-hmm. Go for it. Go for it. I, I, let's let's I, say, can you give us? Can you give us which WrestleMania it is? Maybe that no, would no, that would give it away. Uh, mm. It's it's way earlier than you think. It, it's got to be an announcer table, right? Nope. No. 
Nope. Oh. This is when the announcers are still in like the sky boxes. I I want to say Ooh. I want to say it was Hogan Sergeant Slaughter. Oh, way before that. Really? Give it to me. Terry, Terry Funk WrestleMania 2. Of course it was Terry Funk. <laughs> <laughs> Who else would have it been? Terry Funk WrestleMania 2. It just nobody uh, remembers he was at WrestleMania 2 because like it's a weird because, fever dream where well, Elma, Elvira showed up. <laughs> Not only showed up was on commentary. That was yeah, the LA one. That was the LA yeah, one where he got put yeah, in the, the match. Ring. The match was Haas Funk and Terry Funk against Junkyard Dog and Tito Santana. Yeah, table spot. Wow. Table spot in that match. Wow. You know, it, it, WrestleMania 1 has fond memories for a lot of people, but it's amazing they survived WrestleMania 2. <laughs> <laughs> yep yep to their think. credit they were trying something quite a bit before their time Listen, there's a lot i'm of not gonna lie i'd love to see them try this now mm-hmm. well they did not, well, well i'd, you, I'd love what about raw 25 no no but i'm i'm talking live pay-per-view yeah like i, I live pay-per-view from three different venues Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. that would be a perfect time. You wouldn't have a bored crowd in two of the places. Socially distance mania. <laughs> Probably work. Uh, I, I, I think I'm the only one that said anything. Who wants to go next with their thing they learned? I'll, I'll go ahead and do it. Go ahead. Go for it. Yeah. Number one is not really a bad thing. It It's more of a reflective thing. Um, Given what's going on, it's made it pretty evident and clear who I can support, like who I should get behind in the industry, like wrestlers, promoters. Um, Again, just speaking on a personal stance, how they see my value as a fan. And that that's been, that's been pretty enlightening to put it mildly, to put it as eloquently as possible. Um, And then two, I found like a little like really cool diversion in the past like uh, escape like three weeks. You were mentioning about wrestling trivia. I am sorry, Mike, if I'm making you fall asleep. No, oh, no, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I worked long hours today. <laughs> um, and that would be Quizzlemania over from the boys at Russell Talk. Um, Adam Blompier puts on this like really cool um, – kind of like quiz show and he ha- he has guests on it like this one that they streamed today they had the product david star on there along with sean ross um ross sat from fightful so Ooh, if you have yeah. a couple of hours it's on their um it's co- the channel's on it's called their sister channel on parts fun known but it's through the boys of wrestle talk and that's like really cool are they on youtube tina yes they're on youtube Okay, yeah, drop drop that YouTube link in the uh, in the uh, Facebook group because I I'm all about for some reason when I can't sleep late at night I watch YouTube trivia contests. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, it has the as I mentioned before, it has the um, dudes at Russell Talk. They've had Sean Ross up. Um, oh gosh, Brian Zane with Wrestling with Regret on there. Um, as I mentioned today, they had David Starr on there. Oh gosh, who else? Um, there's a couple other ones that I remember too, or other guests that they have too, but it's actually pretty cool and it's pretty enlightful. And you find yourself, at least for me, I find myself trying to play along with them with the different rounds. It's actually pretty cool. Excellent. Awesome. Awesome. So, uh, who's next? Uh, who's next? I'll go. Um, and cat has appeared. Cat has appeared. He, he, he was bored being off camera. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> <laughs> and I hate to say you hope people's intentions are really their intentions in a positive way and not just playing to the crowd but Randy Orton coming out with a Black Lives Matter uh huh positive hopefully it isn't and this is the old cynical man in me coming out. Hopefully it isn't him just reading the room of saying, oh, I better say something really good like certain, oh, I don't know, 
um, sports franchise teams <clears throat> that should know better tend to keep their mouth shut at this time, given history. Redskins. Oh, sorry. sorry. No, no, I'm thinking. I, I, I'm yeah. thinking different coast. Different coast. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's yeah, those guys. Yeah, those guys. Yeah, yeah. Shut maybe, up, maybe. people. Yeah, maybe <laughs> maybe should... I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. Timing wise, 49ers, Shut up. Yeah, maybe they should take a knee for this conversation. Oh, no. <laughs> damn it! Damn. I couldn't help it. No, you can't. Come on, please, no, you Kaepernick. Anyway, um, <laughs> fuck, I'll take him in Dallas. Dallas, if y'all if y'all want to resign Dak Prescott, sign Kaepernick. I'm cool what? with it. No, no. Oh gosh, this is going to come up so bad. Oh, no. Cowboys signed Andy Dalton. What's happening right now? Yeah, What's happening? I don't even know. Fuck. As a bad <laughs> team, no. I know that's that's bad coming from me. I'm like, really? <laughs> I oh, get to God. say fuck. I have no idea. Nope. I'm out. I'm gone. <laughs> we I'm gone. lost Org with sports ball. Connor, do you have another half of that? <laughs> oh, it's also, okay. Also, so, also, it's also, it's also. moot. No NFL is happening this year anyway. <laughs> That's okay. I, we we're spoiled up here. That's quite all right. I understand yeah, exactly. that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yeah. I need <laughs> something. I need something for the Cowboys. <laughs> And Yo, I would say, uh, can I, wait, can I, I'm sorry. Can I add my NFL thing from last week? Because we haven't had a show since it happened. Go I got the live stream. Go. Antonio Holmes uh, uh, taking a golf swing last Wednesday morning, <laughs> Wednesday <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> like we were doing a live stream with our friends at Jagoff. They were like on a car lot uh, helping out. Zachary's mission was a really good charity that's helping out uh, with children's hospitals. Uh, go check them out. Please investigate. Um, and uh, Santino, Santonio uh, uh, dropped in, and they were there. I was kind of just managing, like I am you guys here, but not hosting. Um, and uh, the clip is on my Instagram on uh, Sorgatron, and I'm sure it's buried everywhere else <laughs> with <laughs> reasons. Um, but uh, yeah, so that was kind of a fun, and I got to call it because I had to tell the people on the car lot that were streaming from an iPhone, but there was four of them and two headphones and they couldn't see what was happening and i'm like hold on guys he's setting up the golf tee i got to call santonio holmes <laughs> golfing play by play sorg please find your resume professional golf play by play announcer this is <laughs> dawning on me right now that's that that i that's in my wheelhouse now i guess so I'm sorry. That's my sports ball. Oh, sorry. That's, that's I'm double, very proud that's of That's double you. sports ball. That's golf I'm, and the NFL. I, sorry, mm. I'm very proud of you. Mm. I'm very proud of you. I just took out. Bless your heart, sword. I, I just. <laughs> I think I just took out the video for the stream. Hold on a second. We'll get it. We'll oh, get boy. It. Okay. Oh, boy. I have no video. It went weird. We'll fix it in post. It's okay. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Guys, who's got the last ones? Let's let's get um, out of here. I, I learned Went Biscuit was right. Everything is fucked. Everybody sucks. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Is that it? Is that all? I just sort of, no one knows what anymore. Did I step on? What's broken? I, I I learned Drake Maverick is a beautiful shiny angel. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <gasps> oh god uh, guys thank you so much it has been your wrestling mayhem show it's been weird it's been different it, we've been all over the place it's been an emotional roller coaster um i hope that we've helped uh put some things in order or at least have you help you laugh uh thank you uh dave ponder for joining us thank you well, thanks, tina thanks for having me on for joining us as well Thank you, thank you. Can I do a quick little plug? Please. Absolutely. And I'll, I'll go ahead and put the link in the group as well. Um, there's been multiple streams on Twitch that I've seen from wrestlers, Mia Yim, a couple other ones too, who have been um, collecting donations from the Minnesota Freedom Fund. Um, that would be my suggestion is to go ahead and take a look at that alongside other organizations that you can donate on um, that uh, resource um, page that uh, Montez Ford and Bianca Petalier put up. Um, Lend your voice, and and if there's and if if you don't mind, and if you don't want to donate, there's other voice the other ways you can um, lend your voice to the movement. Fantastic! There's, there's always options, and and it's knowing those are and, and the right for you. Uh, not all of us uh, feel comfortable going out in the streets, you know, necessarily. But there's there's a lot of things that can that you can have, and even just educating yourself so that you're ready in case your purpose is called on you. 
right? Exactly. There you Correct. Go. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody in the chat room. This weird Wednesday night, and and me apparently unplugging the video to the internet. Uh, but the rest of you aren't even going to notice this because most of you are listening on audio, anyways. Uh, thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Mayhem out. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Wait for the